Hey guys, today I'm throwing my hit it or quit it thoughts on hauls number 30. If you guys have never seen one of these videos from me before, I'll have my playlist linked down below. And basically I will be reviewing all the products I featured in a haul video from about 10 months back and letting you know my current thoughts on those products. Oftentimes, once you see something featured in a haul, you never hear it mentioned again unless it's in a favorites or in empties. So what I like to do in these videos is review every single item that I hauled. My inspiration for this series is It's Kirsten and her What I Thought on Stuff I Bought series. I will have her channel and her playlist linked down below. Please make sure you go subscribe to her. I will also link down below the original haul video and I will list and link all the items that I'm mentioning. This was actually a pretty big haul, but I only have half of the products here to share with you. The other things I have decluttered, so I definitely do have varying opinions on the things I tried out in this haul. First, I have a couple products from Ulta. I purchased the Biore Baking Soda Pore Cleanser and the Baking Soda Cleansing Scrub. These were brand new for spring 2016. I was so excited to try them out. These are supposed to be great for combination skin, and it just seems like a really interesting, innovative product, and I haven't used them as you can see and I want to use them, and the only reason that they haven't been used yet is because I'm still working on my current skincare. It takes me so, so long to use up skincare, especially cleansers, even though I use the same ones basically every single day. It just takes me so long to use them. I think it's just because I underuse products, so hopefully I can finish up a cleanser soon so I can move on to these, and I will definitely update you guys once I try these out. The other product I purchased from Ulta is the NYX Lingerie Liquid Lipstick in the shade Bedtime Flirt. I do have a review on this liquid lipstick as well as a few other NYX products that were new for spring 2016. I will have that linked up here. The NYX Lingerie Liquid Lipsticks are their actual liquid lipstick. The liquid suede's do not dry down to a transfer proof finish. These do dry down to a mostly transfer proof finish. All the shades in this range are nude, which I think is nice to help you find your perfect nude, but because they're all nude, I don't feel like you need to own multiple shades. This shade Bedtime Flirt is the perfect nude for me. Here is a swatch it right here. It is just the perfect peachy nude. I think that this is a really pigmented color. I do have to say from a lot of the reviews that I've seen, the formulation of all the shades is not consistent. The lighter shades are a lot more patchy. I've heard good things about the medium shades like Bedtime Flirt and the deeper shades in the line like Exotic, I believe. I've heard good things about those. So definitely purchase whatever color you think that you would like, but keep your receipt in case that one doesn't have a good formula. So I really wish the formulas were consistent. I've also tried the shade Embellishment, which is the more grayed out purple. It looked terrible on me. I look like a zombie. And also that one was really, really patchy. So the inconsistency is a huge bummer. I do enjoy this formula. This is a straight up mousse. It is not liquidy whatsoever. It also has a flat doe foot applicator, which is nice. It works well with this moussey formula. I do have to say that whenever I swatch this or apply it on my lips, little chunks of product do come off, but if I just run over the chunks a couple times, they do completely smooth out. And that isn't something that bothers me, but I did want to mention it because it happens every single time I use this product. The formula of this is nice. I think that it does dry down really nicely. It isn't the most comfortable, but it also isn't the most uncomfortable. I love this shade. I think it looks so pretty on my skin tone. So if you are able to find your perfect nude out of this line, I recommend you try it out. It is a great drugstore liquid lipstick, but I don't think it is incredible, amazing, the best liquid lipstick ever. So just so, so on this item. Next, I purchased a couple things from Sephora with a gift card I had gotten for Christmas. The first thing I purchased is the Becca Shimmery Skin Perfector in the shade Pearl, which is the shimmery white shade. I am wearing this today mixed with something else. I meant to put this on, but I forgot, so I just topped it over what I was wearing. And this is a shimmery white color. Luckily, this isn't too packed with pigment to look like a streak of white. It definitely just looks like a lot of shimmer. And because it is such a light color, I feel like it really does emphasize pores and texture but I don't have too much of that on my cheek, so it doesn't bother me a ton. This is a really pretty color that's really great for fair and light skin. This is not gonna work for everybody because it will look way too harsh, and it does have a nice 
metallic sheen to it. But I'm definitely disappointed with this. It was my first Becca highlighter I ever tried. It cost $38 and I don't think it is worth 38 bucks because I felt like this was just okay. It didn't wow me like I was expecting it to. So if you're able to find an eyeshadow similar to this, which hopefully you should be able to, I would purchase that instead. The color's pretty, it's a nice formula, but I don't think it's worth $38. I don't reach for this over other highlighters. My favorite is the Balm Mary Luminizer because that formula is so creamy. The color is really pretty. This one shows up better on me, but I definitely prefer that one over this. And this one just did not live up to the hype for me. And the other two products I purchased from Sephora were two liquid lipsticks. The first is one of the Kat Von D Everlasting Liquid Lipsticks in the shade Lovesick. This is a really pretty light mauvey pink. Out of all the shades in the line, this is the one I thought I would get the most use out of. And I do believe at the beginning of 2017, Kat Von D will be releasing more shades of these, which is really exciting. I can't wait to see what those are. So right here is a swatch of love sick these liquid lipsticks do dry down completely almost to a powdery finish and these definitely do feel drying after a couple hours so i did want to note that they aren't the most uncomfortable but they definitely are a bit drying i absolutely love the formula of these these are in between liquidy and moussey but leaning more towards liquidy and this is actually the lip color i wore on my wedding day so i will always love this and it will always have a special place in my heart but i'm definitely interested to try out more shades especially when they extend the line because this is a really nice formula super pigmented not streaky at all beautiful beautiful color the other liquid lipstick I purchased is the Sephora Cream Lip Stain in the shade number 14 Blackberry Sorbet I believe this is a dupe for Lime Crime Beat It and Anastasia Craft right here is a swatch of Blackberry Sorbet such a pretty deep color I have worn this in a few of my recent videos if you want to see what it looks like on. This is a really deep color, but I think it is so pretty. This is a really nice formula. It is in the middle of liquidy and moussey, but leaning more towards the moussey side. These are only $14, which is a great price for a liquid lipstick. And also at the end of December, they are going to be releasing, I think like 20 more shades, which is amazing. Casey Holmes just did a lip swatch video of all of the colors. I will have that linked up here so you guys can check it out so really excited to see what their shades extensions are going to be because this is a nice formula it does dry down to almost a transfer proof finish and this is definitely one of the more comfortable liquid lipsticks that i've tried so i definitely love this color and i would recommend this line and really excited to see some of the shade extensions in person the last two things i had gotten from sephora were some samples the first was the benefit professional matte rescue i think that was a new product that had recently released at that time and a lot of people People were saying it was awesome for oily skin to help mattify. I didn't notice much mattifying at all compared to the other products I was using it didn't do anything significant for me so definitely would not purchase that one and the other thing I tried was the Smashbox Insta Matte Lipstick Transformer which is supposed to mattify any lipstick and I think that was an interesting product it definitely didn't take away any of the shine but it made my lips feel like silicone -y, and it definitely would slip around so it didn't make it last any longer it just took away the shine so it was interesting but I definitely would not buy it I don't think I would get the proper use out of it and then I had purchased a couple items from MAC first I had purchased two blushes from the Flamingo Park collection I had the shade what I fancy which is a satin finish and spring flock which is a matte finish I was so disappointed that these were in plain old black packaging and that they were not in flamingo packaging that's so disappointing to me I don't use these blushes as often as my other MAC blushes and I don't love them as much and I feel like part of the reason might be because all of my other limited edition MAC blushes are in special packaging and these were not so I did depot them and put them in my MAC blush palette I was such a dummy and I use Z palette magnets which are not compatible with the MAC palette so that's why I'm leaving them in the palette because they will fall out if I open the top so so annoying that I didn't put two and two together when I was depotting these. But anyway, these are really pigmented. I do like MAC blushes a lot. They're my favorite blush brand. These colors are pretty, but 
I don't think they are a must-have, and I definitely don't reach for these over my other MAC blushes, but they're still good. I think I'm just so butthurt about the fact that they were not in Flamingo packaging. The other thing I had tried was the Velvet Tees Lip Pencil in the shade Frolic. It was a really pretty light peachy pink color. I did actually mention that in my top 16 disappointing products of 2016, which I will link up here. That had a more slippery silicone feel on my lips, which I do not like for lip products. It just feels a little bit drying, and it also feels like it's just slipping and sliding around at the same time. And it also wasn't very pigmented of a color. I don't have very pigmented lips at all, and I felt like I was really having to go over and over and over to build up the pigmentation. So I was definitely disappointed with those lip products. And the last thing I had purchased from MAC were one of their eyeshadow brushes. I now have three eyeshadow brushes from MAC. This is the 242 Synthetic Flat Shader Brush. I had gotten this on my sister's double discount day with a coupon, so I was able to get this for about 50% off, which is amazing. Otherwise, I would not have purchased it because MAC brushes are incredibly expensive. I love using this brush whenever I'm using a glitter, whenever I'm using a loose shadow, or whenever I'm using a shadow that has a lot of pigment but also a lot of fallout. Using this brush just really helps to apply it on my eye with as little fallout as possible. So this is absolutely a must-have for me. And then I had purchased a couple Makeup Geek shadows. I had gotten some the month before for Christmas, and a few of the shades I wanted were out of stock, but they came back in stock this month, so I purchased them. So the shades I purchased would be Cherry Cola, which is a matte shade. I also purchased Backlight and Secret Garden, which are some duochrome shades. And this Backlight goes from a purple to a blue shift, which is really pretty. I've used this one once or twice. Secret Garden, I haven't used it all which I want to, I'm pretty sure Jaclyn Hill did a tutorial using this when these first came out, so I need to try to recreate that. And Cherry Cola, I have used only a couple times. I did use this in my most recent Joel Tone Smoky Eye tutorial. I will have that linked up here. And I loved using this in the crease. It is so pretty. I love that look so much. And Cherry Cola is a great, great color. I definitely do feel like it is different enough from Bitten to own both of them, but I love my Makeup Geek shadows. They're great, great quality, and I definitely need to use them all more. I've totally used the neutrals a lot more than the colorful shades, but I really want to play with these duo crumbs a little bit more, but I know the quality is amazing. And then I purchased two lip products from ColourPop. I purchased the Ultra Matte Lip in Lumiere 2, which was created by Kathleen Lights. I believe she released this on her birthday. And then I also purchased one of the Matte X Lippy Sticks in the shade Trust Me. And this was the only shade that was released. It was released months before the actual Matte X line, which is why I wanted to try it out because it was a new formula. And also, I don't own any ColourPop reds except for Toucan, which is a basically a bright pink with like more of a red undertone. It definitely leans more pink than red. Starting with the Ultra Matte Lip, I've actually mentioned this in my ColourPop must-haves. I will link that video up here if I have any cards left over. This is a beautiful, beautiful color. I do not like the new Ultra Matte Lip formula. The Ultra Satin formula is my favorite. The Ultra Mattes are definitely more of a liquidy consistency and they do feel quite dry, but I love, love this color. So I swatched it right here under Love Six so you can see how they differ. This one definitely is more pinky and this one is pulling more purple on camera but this is more of like gray toned than this one so they definitely are distinctively different for me. So this is definitely a favorite. I love the color of the formula. Not my favorite but I can deal with it because that color is so so stunning. And then for the Matte X Trust Me Lippy Stick, this is a really really pretty red. Here is a swatch of it right here. This is definitely a red that I could wear, but I never ever wear red. I really regret buying this because I haven't worn it more than once and it's just such a bummer. Yes, I don't have any other reds, so it's not like I have an abundance of reds I never use, but the thing is, I knew I wasn't gonna wear this. I just wanted it because it was a new formula and super limited edition, and it's a beautiful color. The Matte X formula is really nice. It does feel really comfortable. The next thing I purchased is from Lancome. This was part of their spring collection, and this is the My Parisian Blush in the shade number two, Rose 
Hossman. This is what it looks like. It's a really pretty pink, and this is a cream to powder blush formula. Similar to ColourPop, except it's a lot creamier, really easy to work with, pick up on a brush or with your fingers. This is a better version of ColourPop blushes. I wish the ColourPop blushes performed like this one does. It's a super pretty color. I've worn it only a couple times because I don't really reach for cream blushes and I don't wear pink blushes that often, but because the formula is so cool, I had to purchase this. I got this on a double discount day with a coupon and a $10 reward. So I got this $40 blush for about $10, which is awesome. It was definitely worth $10. Would not have been worth 40. I do regret it a little bit for the fact I don't use it a ton, but the formula is really nice. And I really hope that Lancome makes this formula permanent in their line because it is super unique and great quality. And the next thing I had purchased is the China Glaze Nail Polish in the shade for Audrey. I had purchased this from transdesign.com, which is a great place to get nail polishes for a discount. They do have discounted Essie's, Orly's, and China Glaze. I love getting those polishes from there. I like to place an order about once a year once I've gotten quite a big list. Be prepared to spend a lot of money because their shipping cost is a bit expensive. So to make the discount worth it, you really do need to buy a lot of polishes. So I had purchased a bunch of these because this was part of my bridesmaid proposal gift. I did do a video on that as well, which I will link up here if all of my cards aren't used up. And if it is, the link will be down below. I really loved all the things that I put together, but this was my number one wedding color is a Tiffany blue. So I had to, of course, buy the Four Audrey Breakfast at Tiffany's Blue Polish. This is a really nice formula. It is opaque in two to three coats. I definitely think China Glaze Aquadelic performs better. That is opaque in two coats. That one is a bit brighter than Four Audrey, but they are so similar. You definitely don't need both, but I am happy to have this shade, and this is what I have been using on my toes. So all of the rest of the products I no longer have because I decluttered them, and all of these were sent to me, which makes me sound like such a brat, and I'm absolutely grateful for everything that is sent to me, but I am just so, so, so picky with my products that if I don't love something, I'm going to return it if I'm able to, or I'm going to pass it on. So I had gotten some things from Mimi Box and Sleek. I had gotten a couple things from Mimi Box that I know I did a review on. It will be linked up here or down there. The Mimi Box I'm Ruby Cell Puffs, which were puffs to use with cushion foundations, which is awesome because if you are using the puffs that come with cushion foundations, they're going to get pretty grody and these are replacement puffs and they're super thin so they will be able to fit in most compacts. I think it's a really cool idea and when I tried it out, I tried it out with just regular liquid foundation because I didn't have any cushion foundations, but I really like the concept of that and the price was very inexpensive. So I think those would actually be really cool if you do use cushion foundations. I think they would probably be very essential. And then I tried out the Mini Box I'm Multi Stick Highlighting Stick in Luster Beam and the Shading Stick in Luster Bronze. The Highlight Stick was a shimmer highlight, but it didn't give a ton of sheen and the Luster Bronze was a really deep really really orangey warm color that looks really orangey on my skin and the highlighting stick I feel like wasn't the creamiest it was more on the dry side so it was hard to apply to my skin the contour stick did a good job it was pretty creamy but the thing is I never use cream products and I like to set my face with powder and those don't go over powder as well because they're so dry. I feel like it's really hard to get them to draw onto skin, especially if your face is already dry from being set with powder. So I definitely was not impressed with the formulas or the colors of those. So I would pass. And then I got some products from Sleek, the Sleek Blush by 3 Palette in Lace. These sleek blushes are really, really pigmented. Those colors are so beautiful. I actually have that in a giveaway pile. I never used it because I had one in the past that I'd actually given away to my friend Jean because the colors were just something I didn't reach for, but the formula is amazing on sleek blushes, so I would recommend them. All of those blush by threes are such deep, dark, intense colors that they aren't really wearable, especially for light skin, so I just wish they had a shade that really worked for me, but unfortunately, they didn't. And then I got the Sleek Highlighting Palette in Precious Metals. That is the highlighting palette that has 
has three creams and one powder. I sent that to my friend Jean as well because she loves highlights. I don't like cream products and the powder highlight was too deep for my skin. They were nice formulas, but just didn't wow me and I'm not a highlighter person to begin with, but I know that those highlighting palettes are highly, highly raved about, sold out all the time. Then I had tried the Sleek Eyebrow Stylus Pencil in the shade Light. I had originally tried out the shade Medium, way too dark. The shade Light was really, really orangey red, so that did not work for my skin tone at all. That would be great for redheads, but I didn't feel like Sleek actually had a shade that would be good for blondes. And that was an angled brow pencil like the Anastasia Brow Definer, except the Anastasia, even though it's angled, is really thin, and the Sleek is pretty thick. So if you have thick eyebrows, it will work well for you, but if you have thin brows, it might be too large. It was very, very creamy, so it was really pigmented, so you do have to be careful when applying it because you can get really big block brows really quickly because it is almost too pigmented. Some brow pencils have like a decent mixture of a waxiness and a creaminess. That one was like 99% cream, 1% wax. And then Sleek sent me the entire range of the Lip VIP semi-matte lipsticks. I didn't think they were semi-matte at all. They were totally just straight up cream lipsticks. And I didn't really like any of those shades on me. There were a couple nudes, peachy shades, but then like a bright orange and a red. Pretty colors, but I didn't like them on me. And they were just cream lipsticks. They were not semi-matte at all. So I did get rid of those as well. They did send me a duplicate color, which I do have in a giveaway pile as well. I'm just waiting to accumulate a couple more things before I do a giveaway. So again, not to sound like a brat, but I just didn't love any of those products enough to keep them. So guys, that was my hit or to quit it thoughts on hauls at number 30. I would love to know your thoughts if you try out any of these products. Thank you all so much for watching this video. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye, guys.